Three Men in a Boat displays the new Victorian middle classes at leisure. They are unheroic, fallible, incompetent, often vain, but always without malice or ill intent. Unlike the pilgrims of the Canterbury Tales, or Stanley in search of Livingston as Biggs's boy quips at them, they're not going on a serious journey, but they are on a civilised, if rather rackety, adventure. In terms of narrative, the book is a ragbag of anecdotes and digressions. Harris and Jay don't even set foot in their boat till chapter 5, for instance, the narrator having spent so much time beforehand describing their preparations and recounting various tales. And once the journey is underway, Jerome often turns aside to moments of personal philosophising or reimagining the history of certain places en route. This latter is a remnant of what the book was originally planned to be, that is, a travelogue. It survives in a transmuted form, however, more to do with time than space. Jay indulges himself with his historical fantasies, but the interesting sections are those where he examines the collision between modernity and the past. He talks about the man who wallpapered over the ancient oak panelling in his house because it looked awful gloomy before. And he ponders whether the cheap trifles of his day, the willow pattern plates, the china dogs, the samplers, would become the prized treasures of future ages. Another theme of the book is the mundane and unexceptional, and our main characters are unexceptional, except perhaps for their bumbling approach to practicalities, and how the simple objects of life seem to thwart our intentions. Talking about tow lines, Jay says that no matter how carefully you roll them up, they'll immediately turn into a ghastly, soul-revolting tangle. And later, observing the mess Harris and George get into, trying to assemble the canvas over the boat, he comments, You would not imagine this to be dangerous work, but looking back now, the wonder to me is that any of us are alive to tell the tale. The curiously restrained exaggeration of those statements is also typical, because the language and tone of the narration are essential to the humour of the book. It's a particularly English mode, the emotion itself outlandish, but the phrasing so precise and cool that it renders the outlandishness risible. Harris, George and Jay take themselves so seriously, and yet the narration gently mocks them throughout. Three Men in a Boat thus offers an entertaining contrast to the stereotypical image of the Victorians, especially the men, as stiff, proper, buttoned up and overly serious. Harris, George and Jay are three blundering boys who have endured beyond their Victorian confines, and we can recognise them in our own time. <laughs>